All right, so number 15 here, we have, um, what is the slope of the line represented by 5x minus 12y equals 24? So they are asking for the slope. Now, for the slope, the slope is always the m when an equation is in slope-intercept form or y equals mx plus b form. Now, the format that our equation is given to us in is called standard form. So we are not able to tell what the slope is right away from that. Some people want to say, oh, it's the thing next to the x. So some people might choose 5 or something along the lines of that. But we have to get it into slope-intercept form first. So we do this by getting y by itself. So we're going to isolate y. And then look at what's next to the x right there. So isolate y. So to do that... We're going to subtract 5x from both sides. And 24 and 5x, those are not like terms, so we cannot combine those. So we're just going to write it as negative 5x plus 24. We don't have a way to simplify that. Now, you still have the negative 12y um, going on. A lot of people will write just 12y. They'll forget to take in uh, consideration the negative that's out in front. So make sure you drop down that entire 12y negative uh, 12y down to the uh, next step. And then we're going to divide both sides by negative 12. And those cancel out. And then you have y equals, and then you have 5 over 12. You can't really do anything with that as far as simplification. And then minus 2 in this case. So here is your y equals mx plus b form. So then going back to the question, they're asking for the slope. And we use m to represent the slope. So that is the number out in front of x. So it has to be this 5 over 12j right there. Okay. Um, next problem here, uh, which expression is equivalent to 6x squared plus 13x and plus 5 right there. Okay. So two different ways we can do this here. We can factor this expression. And I'll show you how I teach factoring. Or we can take these right here and multiply these two binomials. Now, most of you guys learn uh, that we can use this acronym called FOIL to do that. First times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, last times last right there. And that would be uh, the FOIL process there. And there's also another way you can, um, another visual thing that you can do. So you can FOIL all your answers together, see if that matches 6x squared plus uh, 13x plus 5, or you can factor um, the expression down from the beginning. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how I teach. I teach by um, factoring. What we need to do is figure out the product of that right there. That's 30 right there as far as the coefficients go. And then we need to ask ourselves what multiplies to 30 but then adds to 13. What well, multiplies to 30 and add to 13. And um, two numbers I'm thinking of there is we could do like 3 times 10. All right, 3 times 10 multiplies to 30. 3 plus 10 adds to 13. Okay, so that's the first thing we ask ourselves. And I draw, um, some, some of your teachers might do this here. They put, you know, 6 times 5. They draw like this little visual thing to kind of keep all of our infra information organized. So they say 6 times 5, that's 30 up there. Uh, what adds to 13 down at the bottom, and then we say, okay, we need, we use the 3 and the 10 right there. It's just a way to keep all your information organized there. Um, you can do what I did over here at the right. This is kind of what I use in class. So. All right, and then from there, we say, okay, x plus 3 and x plus 10, but then we take our a value, and we divide by. So our a value, or if it's in ax squared plus bx plus c, we take the a value and we divide by that. So we divide by 6 here, divide by 6 there. All right. Then we reduce. That first one reduces to 1 half. That next one reduces to 5 over 3. Okay. And then here's the weird step. There's nothing really mathematical um, why you do this here is just kind of a pattern someone saw that helps us um, do this process here. It's, they saw that this pattern that this, these numbers, these denominators, if you put them out here in the front, 
and then keep the num numerator uh, in the same spot there, those uh, should foil together and be the answer there. So we need something that's 2x plus 1, and then 3x plus 5, that is answer C. Now I'm going to show you taking that answer, we're going to think about foiling. So let's imagine we took our answer and foiled it together, kind of working backwards. Let's see how that matches there. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. Okay, 1 times 3 is 3x. And then 1 times 5 is 5 right there. And then when we combine our like terms, that gets us the same thing that we started out with right there. 6x squared plus 13x plus 5 right there. So anyways, if you're not comfortable with factoring, there's a you know, billion different ways that you can do it, little tricks and stuff like that. This is kind of what I did in class. If you're not sure, um, you know, or if your teacher does something different, go check out uh, you know, how your teacher does it. But the main thing is we want to factor. So some type of factoring technique on that. So, all right, moving along. A bus travels two different routes, the green route and the blue route. The routes have different lengths. Monday, the bus traveled the green route six times and the blue route five times, traveling a total of 52 miles. Okay, now on Tuesday, the bus traveled the green route 12 times and the blue route 13 times and traveled about 119 miles. What is the length of the green route in miles? All right, so you have two situations. You have two unknowns. That means we need two equations for this. This is going to be what we call a system of equations here. We need two equations. Then we're going to use what we call substitution or elimination to solve those two equations there. And then we can find our two different solutions. We have the green route that we're trying to find. We're trying to find the total distance of the green route. And then actually, they don't ask for it, but there's also the blue route distance that's unknown as well. So here's what we'll do. We'll look at this first situation. Green route, is he did that six times. And then the uh, blue route was five times there. So we're going to say six times G for the green route. Five, he did the, the blue route five times, so we'll put six, uh, five B. And then that total number of miles was 52 miles. Whenever I see a total, you need to think of like a sum. A total is a sum. It's something plus something. Now this other situation on the other day, he goes green route 12 times and then blue route 13 times. So we're going to say, whoops, 12G for the green route plus uh, 13B for the blue route and then equals 119. Okay, So there are two different ways, and I'm going to make this look a little bit better, but there are two different ways you can solve a system of equations. Um, you can use substitution or elimination. It does not matter which one you do. In this case here, I'm going to use what's called elimination. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and add my two equations up, and I want one of the variables to cancel out. So like maybe I want my g's to cancel out. So if I want my g's to cancel out, i got to modify it a little bit. Because if I add the g's right now, you're going to have 18 g's total. And I don't want 18 g's. I want them to cancel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation right here. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by a number. And if I can get a number that I can multiply it by, and make it look like a negative 12g, if it looks like a negative 12g, then I can get the g's to cancel out. So this number here is going to be negative 2. If I multiply everything by negative 2, or you can write the negative 2 over here on this side, doesn't matter. If I can uh, do all that right there, I'm going to get negative 12g for the first thing. And you do times the 5b, you'll get minus 10b. And then the 52, I think that'll be like negative... 104 in this case. So now I modified that first equation. The second, or the third equation right here is still the same as the first equation. We just multiply both sides by 2, and it's a modified version. And now I'm going to add the two equations. The g's are going to cancel. All right. When you add up the b's, you're going to get three b's left over. When you add the 119 and the negative 104, I guess we're going to get, um, what was that, 15 right there? So then we can divide both sides by 3, and then we got b is equal to, I guess, 5. All right. Now that's the number of blue 
or that's the the miles, I guess, five miles for the blue. All right, but that wasn't what they were asking. The original question was asking, what's the green route do? So if I take this b equals five, I can plug it back into either one of the equations or any of the equations, I guess I should say, any one of them. Typically, I do the one that has the smallest number, so I do like the 6g plus 5b equals 52, so I'm going to plug that in there. I'm going to zoom out so I can see it. So 6g and then plus 5 times b, but instead of b, I'm going to plug in 5, and then equals 52. Okay, so 6g and then plus, what is that, 25, and equals 52. I'm going to, my G's and 6's kind of look alike, but I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides there. That'll be, what, 20, um, I don't know, brain fart here, 27. And then we will divide, oh, okay, so I guess it does come out not super plain. So divide by 6 there, and let me grab it calculator there It'd probably be three or actually four point something 27 divided by six 4.5 so that is your green route and where's FG right there 4.5 miles and that's how you do that one now there's another way you can do uh, systems of equations or substitution this problem wasn't geared up in a good way that makes substitution the best way to solve it uh, but, you know, you can go find tutorials on how to do substitution if you want. All right, let's see here. The table shows the heights and lengths of several rectangles. Uh, what is the correlation coefficient for the data um, about the strength of the linear association between the height and the length of the rectangles? Uh, what does it indicate? I missed that word. What does it indicate? All right, so we're looking, is it positive or negative correlation? Is it strong or weak? All right, so this is dealing with scatter plots. So with this problem here, I'm actually going to bust out the calculator here. So I'm going to pull this down and show you how to type all this information into the calculator. So I'm going to see if I can get it to where it's still on the screen here. And hopefully this all works here. So to do all your data stuff, um, we're going to hit the stat button. So we'll hit stat. We're going to go to edit, and then we're going to type in this data right here. Um, so there's a lot of it here, so uh, just bear with me or skip ahead in the video to where I have it all entered. Uh, but the heights, I'm going to put this all in the L1 column, and then the lengths, I'm going to put it all in the uh, L2 column. And just be careful not to type it in wrong. If you type it in wrong, you might get some weird-looking stuff going on. And I don't know why they needed to do so many of them. Okay, so hopefully that's enough of them there. And then you're going to hit over. And then we're going to go type in all of our links there. So 21, 25, 32, 12. 16. And of course, they didn't give you any, yeah, the, the numbers in any logical order, so it's kind of a pain in the, in the butt. Uh-oh, I think I missed one. No, actually, I think we're good. Yep, we're good. So once we have all that, a lot of people are going to hit graph and you're not going to be able to see anything. Or you might see your old graphs that you have typed in. By the way, if you want to clear out your old graphs, you can go to Y equals. So I'm going to go ahead and clear those out. Clear, clear, and then we'll go back to graph. But still, we're not going to be able to see anything. And that's because our stat, first of all, our stat plot's probably not turned on. So if you hit second Y equals, we need to turn the stat plot on. So we're going to select that first plot right there. We're going to hit on, we're going to highlight on. Yeah, you can go and play around with the settings if you wanted to connect the lines. 
change the colors, change the way it looks. But once we're done with that, we'll hit second quit or second mode, and we'll hit graph again. And we still don't see anything. That's because we're probably not zoomed out enough. We had points like 70, 25, 92, 45. We have some large points there. So if we hit the zoom button and then we hit zoom nine right there, stat, that will zoom in automatically on all of our data there. So there we go. There's all of our data. Now, this one's kind of weird. It looks like all the data is kind of going a little bit up, but it's not. You know, there's not a whole lot of, there's not strong correlation going on. And I don't know what's going on with this random point out here. You know, sometimes it's good to go back and double check the data uh, that you typed it in correctly. But this is what this looks like here. So not very strong. So I'm going to pull back up here. So uh, no correlation is not an option. So as far as we, we know, it's definitely weak correlation, definitely not strong. Uh, so as far as a, po uh, a weak negative or we positive so negative uh, remember that's going to be kind of like going down from left to right and then positive is going to be going up from left to right there um, so I would say it's leaning a little bit more towards the positive side versus the negative side uh, when you go back and look at the data here so yeah it just kind of goes up a little bit from left to right you know if they took this point out it'd probably be a little bit more clear but uh, unfortunately, they put that there. So I think uh, that one's going to be C on that one as far as the best option there. So um, hopefully next time, you know, on the next test, hopefully they get something that's not as, you know, could be argued, I guess, either way. But that is that one right there. All right. So let's see here. Final one uh, for this little section here. The expression uh, x cubed uh, times x raised to the negative 17th. It's equivalent to x to raise to n, what is the value of n? So basically, this is one of your exponent laws. Now, this, all your exponent laws, that's on that formula chart at the very beginning of the test, so make sure you utilize that. And what they tell you to do with the powers when you're multiplying things with common bases is you need to add them. So we need to do 3 plus negative 17. Okay. So when we do that, that'll get us x raised to negative 14. That's the answer right there. Now, typically, if they ask you to simplify that, you'll probably write it as a division here. So one of our rules says you change that into a fraction, and then you put it in the denominator. But that, obviously, you can't write that out in your little bubble thing. They're asking what's the value of n, or what's the value of the exponent. So we would go in and then you know, write in the negative, the 1 and the 4, and then go bubble the 1, go bubble the 4, and then you'd be good to go on that one.